In his late 40s, a successful lawyer, Wellingtonian Brent Williams became overwhelmed by depression and he walked away from his partner, four children and his job. His journey of recovery is now told in a highly unique graphic memoir. And here to tell us more, please welcome to the cafe, Brent Williams. Welcome, Brent. Welcome. Welcome. Um, first up, we must say congratulations on the book. It is quite astounding. It is something quite special. Uh, but we thought, before we talk more about this, can you tell us a little bit about the work you're doing as a lawyer? Um, most of my life has been, has been making resources for people in the area of uh, domestic violence, child abuse, uh, legal rights, helping vulnerable people understand the law and what they can do to protect themselves. So it's been my life's work really. Wow. Which is an interesting position to be in given what you were going through. So what yeah. happened back in 2009? I had just been working a very intense few years, working with the Family Court on the Parenting Through Separation Program, uh, the Care of Children Act, domestic violence resources, child abuse resources. I was passionate, I was fired up, I was, I was on a mission and unaware why I was on that mission in many ways. It was my life's passion, um, but it caught up with me in the form of my own awareness that there was a whole lot of stuff from my own childhood that was um, that was very relevant that I hadn't addressed right and mm -hmm. it came round and sort of bit me in the back in the form of depression and right. I was down and I couldn't get up easily as these things that do tend to happen it happened to the mm -hmm. strongest of people too because I mean on face value uh, you look like you've got everything going on have you a successful job uh, from a wealthy family your dad mm -hmm. was a millionaire mm -hmm. property developer yeah. and philanthropist uh, Sir Arthur Williams however you mm -hmm. said he was a tyrant uh, and and do you think that played a major role in your illness? Absolutely. From the, my earliest memories, my father's influence was enormous. Mm. You know, he was a very oppressive man, and domestic violence was a daily occurrence in, in our family. And as a child, you grow up with that. It has huge damaging effect on children. Mm. Children are like sponges. They soak it up. Their brains, their whole, their emotions, they respond to that. It affects them hugely, and it's going to have some, it's going to have major impact on children if they grow up in that environment. Mm. It's very harmful for kids. And you know, back in those days too, it was swept under the carpet. So you and your experience in sharing that with New Zealand mm. is so healing, which I, I, I salute you for. What was it like in the depths of your depression? I I had made resources about depression. I had done a book called Mental Health and the published a book called Mental Health and the Law. Yet when it came, when it happened to me, I had no awareness of right. what was going on. There was just this overriding shame that I couldn't do what I did before. I wasn't strong enough to overcome this. I'd always thought of myself as a strong, capable person. So huge amount of shame. So with shame, you tend to hide. You don't talk to people about it. You go away because you're too ashamed to actually engage and be with people. Mm. And of course, with depression, that is the worst thing you can do. Depression loves isolation. Right. It loves festering and, and feeding off that. You know, the counter of that, is, of course, is to be with people, to get help, to be surrounded by people and love and, and mm. get well again, which is a long process, but yeah. And the thing is, is that there is actually nothing to be ashamed of with depression. It's an illness. Uh, but unfortunately, when you're in the depths of that, you don't see that yourself, do you? No. The voice of depression is very strong telling you you're worthless, your life isn't worth anything, so with that comes a lot of shame. Mm. Plus there is the stigma in community still, it's changing, um, that mental illness is something that's to be a bit scary and um, don't like people still don't like talking about it. It's to do with the mind and it's, you know, it, it does have those fears which, which adds, adds to people's reluctance. There's been a lot of work done, people like John Kerwin have done fantastic work bringing it out into the open. And, but we need to do a lot more as well. But not, and people like you are doing that, which I, which I, I like. So, so was the book part of that recovery process? Absolutely. Right. It was me finding a way that I could express myself. In the early days, it was just writing. It wasn't writing a book. It was just journal writing, writing about my feelings, mm. what was happening to me. And then it sort of shifted into more research. Well, what is this thing and how, how does it affect me? And, what, and most importantly, what are the things that I can do to get well? When I started to get some motivation, to actually do the things, do good things to help myself. And that's when it started to form into a book that could perhaps help others as well as mm. myself. Mm. And why did you decide to make it a graphic novel? Because this is quite unique and I really like it because I think it's going to have a lot of appeal, uh, particularly to young men as well. Yeah. It's actually very simple. When I was really depressed, I couldn't read words, even though that had been my job. 
couldn't understand, couldn't process things. You know, my brain was damaged and depression damages your brain. So pictures, I thought there's a chance to actually express and convey information through, through, through pictures. And, and you've yeah. used a brilliant artist from Turkey. Yeah. Uh, tell us more about that relationship. Did you go over there or was it just all through email? How did you work that? Well, we just worked slowly together over three and a half years. Wow. Panel by panel. Yes. Communicating through Skype and yeah, sending them material. Well, it looks amazing. Yeah. Um, just quickly, for anyone who feels that maybe they're suffering or if they're not recognising that, if a loved one has somebody that they're mm. they think is suffering, what should they do? There's a lot of things you can do. Just make sure the person doesn't isolate themselves. Surround them with love. They're not often the easiest people to care for because depression comes out in all sorts of unpleasant ways. But get help. You, depression is too big, too gnarly, too horrible to deal with on your own. You need a lot of help. Brilliant. And I thank you for writing this book and because it's going to certainly help others. And um, I'm pleased you're on the ro road to recovery, which is Absolutely. brilliant. Excellent. Thank, thank you so, you so much. much. Thank you. Brilliant book. Now, Out of the Woods is available now from Good Bookstores. And if you or someone you love, as we mentioned, is dealing with any of the issues that we've discussed this morning, please do reach out to your GP or call the numbers on screen.